Hey, while well, y'all put some questions up in Discord, Adafruit.it slash Discord, we're going to do some top secret. Uh, this week on Top Secret, let's play a couple videos and then you're going to talk about one of the things that you're working on and more. I'll try. Right, later, what is this? These are some Rev Bs of my uh, Pico Bell with DVI output. Uh, this has a mini DVI output port and stem IQT, and it goes on a Pico or a Pico W. Um, and we've already tested it with the Pico, and it works great using uh, either Arduino or uh, now with uh, Scott's fancy new build, CircuitPython. But what if you're like, hey, I want to use my Pico W, right? So you want to use your board that has like the Wi-Fi chip on the inside? Well, you can. This is the Pico Bell with DVI output plugged on top of my, uh, like it's literally my Pico W. It's got the antenna and everything. And then over here, it's got Wi-Fi output and uh, you got the um, REPL working and it can connect over Wi-Fi and use SSL and get data. And this is the monochrome mode output. So you can see... I think once it's done, it'll print out how much memory is left over, and it's about like uh, 50 kilobytes. Yeah, so about 53 uh, K. Early data, what is this? This is the Adafruit Can Pico Bell. So this is a cowbell for the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can use it with the Pico or Pico W. Uh, and it adds CAN bus support via the MCP2515 here, and there's a CAN transceiver. And uh, even has comes with terminal blocks pre-soldered. So I'm building a tester. I'm using the Metro ESP32S2 because it has native CAN. So what I do is I use the native CAN on these pins connected through a CAN transceiver, which then um, connects through to the terminal block, and then it like tests itself. So like one CAN bus is on SPI, and one is on native. And let's see if it works. Oh yay! It passes tests, so super fast, and we'll get these into the shop soon. People can add cowbell to their Picos or Pico Ws. All right, Lydia, what's this? Okay, um, this is a design that I just finished, uh, and I like to render the designs because it gives me a good sense of the component uh, locations. So this is actually an old design. This was originally a Metro RP2040 airlift. So where the micro SD card was, was an ESP32 that was like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But then like... The next week, the Pico W came out, and I was like, oh, man, like, probably nobody wants, you know, an ESP airlift-based board. Um, but recently, I've been doing a lot of tester revisions, and it's like, man, I could really use having an RP2040 in a metro shape uh, with an SD card slot. And I was like, oh, you know, let's be, let me revisit that old design. Pulled off the uh, ESP32, slotted in the micro SD, and we had a couple of extra GPIO, because there's so many pins on the RP2040, that it has the SDIO pins connected as well. So we might look at um, it could be good for like really high speed data logging and or data uh, reading. And uh, you know, another thing I added is it's got both the SWD Classic and uh, over there, you, my hands cut off, but it's got the uh, uh, three pin uh, debug port that um, is on the Pico uh, H. You have the standard like Pico Probe debug port. Uh, it's got USB C, Stem QT, reset button. Um, there's a the boot button and it's the right angle so you can get to the meme when the shield is on. And um, one funny thing is, so D0 and D1 are RX and TX, right, on Arduino. But on modern Metro Arduino-shaped boards, you can use them for UART. That's what like, the hardware UART is. But the hardware UART would be D1, D0, not D0, D1. And so there's a little DPD, D switch. So you can switch on whether you want the pins to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like in a nice pretty order, or you want to use hardware serial and you want it to be in the correct orientation. Or maybe you designed a board and you've got the UART pins backwards, right? You just swap them. So uh, it could be very handy. I, I tend to swap the UART pins all the Okay, time. and you have something you want to show on the overhead? Yeah. Top secret? Okay, this is a big top secret then. Um, okay, so this is uh, more Bones boards are on the way. Um, so we've got, uh, next week's probably going to be the ESP, sorry, the RP2040 CAN, and we did the DVI, and we did um, the uh, RFM, and we did the LoRa, and we did the USB host, and this is uh, Dan Halbert's idea, um, I think because he was a little tired of, uh, so many people use our prop maker feather to, uh, feather wing to make swords like uh star wars uh, sabers and we're out of um feather m4s and like it's really hard to get feather rp uh feather nr52840 so he's like why don't we just make a board that's all in one and he i was like that's a good idea so this is the prop maker rp2040 so it's got 
the RP2040 feather, you know, all the pins and everything, and sensor input. It's got accelerometer, so uh, it's good for motion detection. It's got an I2S amplifier, because the RP2040 doesn't have a DAC, but it does have really good I2S support with PIO. And you can play MP3s or WAV files. Um, and it's got uh, these terminal blocks that are going to be pre-soldered in, so you don't have to do any soldering. And they're not labeled. Well, they were labeled, but then they got cut off. But it's uh, NeoPixel output with level shifted, uh, 5 volts, I2S output, and one pin for like a switch input like a button for changing modes and then there's a little bit of space so there i made a um this little white stripped header is a servo optional servo header so if you solder in three pins you can plug in a standard servo um and use that for uh you know a small animatronics project so it can be really good for like low props and robotics especially since it'll be basically solder free for a lot of projects you won't need to um do any soldering at all and if you want to there's plenty of feather pins if you want to add more gpio Okay, and that is top secret for this week. Get back in the vault. Yeah. <laughs> it's no secret that she's teething. Um, okay.